I can't recall ever being so frightened in my entire life. Mrs. Nelson acted as solicitor for the Hamill family after Robert Hamill was kicked to death on the streets of Portadown. There were allegations of RUC sectarian partisanship. She continued to examine the case until her own murder yesterday. In Lurgan, she pleaded successfully for the release of Colm Duffy, who stood accused of the brutal murders of RUC officers David Johnson and John Graham in the town. Her strident defence and her willingness to take the fight to the opposition won her few friends in the RUC. No, I'm not. <laughs> Well, yeah. Certainly that's not, a, not going to be allowed to drop. It's going to be pursued in Europe and certainly before the United Nations as well. And we'll be seeking immediate access to the civil courts. The case remained unchanged. From the outset, doubt, serious doubts were kept on the credibility of the witness. Mr Duffy's innocence was established and yet it took four months to reach this stage. She worked closely with UN rapporteur Mr Kumara Swamy during his investigation into judges and lawyers in Northern Ireland and gave evidence herself to the U.S. administration. These difficulties have involved RUC officers questioning my professional integrity, making allegations that I'm a member of a paramilitary group, and at their most serious, making threats against my personal safety. Her murder yesterday was carried out using technology not previously associated with the Red Hand Defenders. Where the expertise came from is one of the many questions facing the investigating team. Another is how to make the investigation itself acceptable to the entire population in the North. Given Mrs. Nelson's troubled relationship with the RUC, Chief Constable Ronnie Flanagan was quick to call in outside help. I have no doubt whatever of the professionalism and diligence and determination of my officers. They've displayed it time and time again. They're already displaying it in this investigation. But I have to be sensitive to concerns that have been raised. And indeed, in this particular case, concerns raised at an international level. And in that sensitivity, I'm determined that allegations will not undermine the diligence and professionalism of my officers, but that they will be supported under the direction and control of Mr. Phillips, an independent chief constable. And indeed, he will have available to him an international dimension in this investigation provided by the FBI. But the chief constable has yet to spell out what direction and control actually means. Already, questions are being asked about the role of these outside agencies. Will Mr. Phillips carry out an investigation or supervise one carried out by the RUC? Kieran Fitzgerald reporting there. Let's now go straight over to Washington. There are dissident loyalist groups. Um, what mainstream pro-ceasefire loyalists are saying is that uh, elements connected with Ulster resistance uh, provided the technology and the know how to do this bomb and the Red Hand Defenders were allowed to claim it. The Red Hand Defenders emerged last year. They are a, a loose alliance, almost a flag of convenience for various dissident loyalist groups, ex-members of the Loyalist Volunteer Force, ex-members of the Ulster Volunteer Force, and in okay. Mid-Ulster connected with Ulster Resistance. Okay, if you're saying Ulster Resistance, are they the same grouping that emerged at the time of the Anglo-Irish Agreement? They are the remnants of that group. That, that group has changed. Initially it was embraced by uh, prominent loyalist politicians who then distanced themselves from it and, and cut, their, cut their links with Ulster resistance when it was engaged in trying to smuggle missiles, for example, to the South Africans um, and they were arrested, a number of people were arrested in Paris for that. Ulster resistance, don't forget, hold a large consignment of weapons that the loyalists smuggled into Northern Ireland at the end of 1987. Their tranche uh, of a three-way split between them and the UDN, UVF, has never been found. It's still in Mid-Ulster and a lot of the weapons and explosives that have fallen into the hands of dissidents groups are, are supplied by members okay. of Ulster Resistance. Henry, it's confusing to even us who know a bit about it, and it's very confusing to people who know nothing about it. You're saying that the Ulster Resistance are the group, you believe, who actually murdered Rosemary Nelson? If, if not actually put their hand on, on, under the car, and, uh, they provided the technology and they provided okay. the bomb. That is what mainstream loyalist paramilitaries are saying tonight. Right, and very briefly, are they now fringe elements of the UDA? Are we having disgruntled loyalists now going into what they now term an umbrella Ulster resistance? Well, well, it's, it's, uh, the Red on Defenders is used to cover a number of different groups. There are dissident loyalists from all the three main loyalist paramilitary groups. There are people who are d disaffected with the ceasefires, even the LVF which right. last year was still killing people, called a ceasefire in May. A number of people have left that organisation in the Antrim area, for instance, and they carried out a, a couple of murders, the, the murders before the ceasefire. The, the, yes, the, all the groups, all the fringe groups have produced these people. And are they 
What is their strategy? Why did they murder Rosemary Nelson? To destabilize the peace process and provoke republicans into retaliation. Very simple, it's as simple as that. Okay. They want to destroy the agreement. And are they responsible for the intimidation of Catholics that's going on at the moment in various areas around Lauren? There, there, is, there is coordinated intimidation. It's been going on since last summer and not been very well reported in places like Carrick, Fergus and Larne by disaffected UD, members of the UDA who don't support the organization's leadership line on keeping the ceasefire and supporting the agreement. Okay. Let me, I bring, I'll come back to you again. Let me bring in 